At number 10, Ceremonial Daggers. This item fires out three homing knives every time an enemy is killed. Each dagger only deals 150% of your base damage, but the power of this item comes from the sheer amount of quantity. This item activates every time you kill an enemy, all those small enemies like Wisps, Imp, Lemarians, Jimmy, all those enemies you kill without a second thought now spawn three daggers apiece. Each dagger has a 1.0 proc coefficient, making it a great tool for proc chains, increasing its damage even further. It gets insane if you already have a decent amount of damage, when daggers kill an enemy, the enemy will spawn more daggers, which in turn kill the next enemy, and so on, until you can basically AFK entire teleporter events. This is also the best item you can have for all artifact runs because the daggers don't damage you like other area of effect items. Combo it with crit and a shatter spleen and this thing will shred. It combos well with so many items, but its biggest drawback, and the reason it's number 10, is because of Mythrix. You can't really use ceremonial daggers in the boss fight, you can a little bit in phase 2 and 3, but it's not nearly as effective as it is in the mid game. Using a forgive me please can help a little, but unless you have a soulbound, it's not going to do that much. Even so, it's an amazing item and definitely deserves the number 10 spot. At number 9, Unstable Tesla Coil, fire out chain lightning that hits 3 enemies for 200% base damage every half second or 400 damage a second. Tesla is a very universal item. There's not a single character it's bad on, it's just extra damage for free, and quite a bit of it at that. Tesla turns off and on every 10 seconds, so it'll be active 50% of the time, which is quite a bit. This is an amazing tool for taking out smaller enemies that overwhelm you. Are you tired of these little shits coming out of nowhere and kamikaze you, ending your run? Well, Tesla is a great way to deal with Larva and Jimmy. Wisps and Blind Pests are no longer a threat with this item. This item just spits out damage, and like Ceremonial Daggers, Tesla is another great item for going AFK. It does best in situations where there are a lot of enemies on screen due to the lightning being able to chain off multiple enemies, kind of similar to a ukulele, but it works great in single target situations too, including Mythrix. A lot of red items don't really work in the boss fight. Tesla and many of the items coming up are exceptions to this. Just be careful in phase four and keep your distance from Mythrix unless you want to be barbecued. When enemies have this item, it can be kind of rough. With Mithrix, it's easy to avoid, but scavs can also get it, and god forbid this item is given to enemies in void fields. If that happens, all I can say is good luck. At number 9, Shattering Justice. After hitting an enemy 5 times, reduce their armor by 60 for 8 seconds. Now, armor is a mechanic that is usually discussed in reference to items like Opal and Rose Buckler, but in the case of Shattering Justice, it applies negative armor to enemies. Most regular enemies in the game have no armor, with the exception of Solus Probes for some reason, but ignoring that, this means the Shattering Justice debuff will make normal enemies take 37.5% more damage. Now, in reality, you won't see that on every enemy since it requires hitting the enemy five times before it activates, so smaller enemies like Wisps and Jimmy will often die before the fifth hit. But this is just a regular enemy. Most bosses have an armor stat of either 15 or 20. You might think this would make Shattering Justice worse on bosses, but it's actually the opposite. Shattering Justice increases your damage to bosses by about 45%. And because bosses are so tanky, this will be working on basically every boss you fight. Healing 45% more damage from a single item is great value, especially when multiplied with other items. Shattering Justice can also synergize with Deathmark, an item that increases your damage by 50% when an enemy has 4 debuffs. Admittedly, this is really hard to do in a solo game, but Shattering Justice counts as a debuff, making it a little bit easier. The fact that this is a debuff is huge. An item like Armor Piercing Rounds increases your damage to bosses, but that's just for you. The benefit of having it as a debuff is your teammates can take advantage of it, increasing their damage as well as your own. This also works for drones if you don't have any friends. Now this item does have a pretty big drawback, and that's its consistency. This is an item that works a lot better on certain survivors. Commando, a survivor that is shooting constantly, will be able to proc it a lot more than someone like Loader, who doesn't attack all that fast. Individual loadouts can have an effect on this too, the best example being Bandit, where Burst can proc it very consistently, but Blast cannot. Yet another reason why Blast is dog water. But overall, Shattering Justice is a great item and is a huge damage increase most of the time. You know what's worse than Jimmy? Having your data harvested by hackers and data brokers. But with the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN, you can protect yourself. You know them, you love them. NordVPN is the leading VPN service provider that keeps your online experience secure and private. Whether you're browsing the web, streaming your favorite content, or fighting Jimmy. It's 2024, and if you don't have a VPN, you're putting yourself at risk, especially if you're somebody that uses public Wi-Fi. Public networks are incredibly susceptible to attacks, but by encrypting your data with Nord, you don't need to worry about it. 
But beyond privacy and security, NordVPN is just a great tool to have. The other day I was trying to download something and the website I was downloading from had a download limit, but just by switching to a different server, I was able to get around it and get my files. And one of my favorite features is being able to access region lock content. If you wanna watch one of my favorite shows, the 1997 Teletubbies, you would have to be in Switzerland or Germany to access it on Netflix. But with NordVPN, you can go there in a click of a button. NordVPN is offering four months free for my viewers with the purchase of a two-year subscription. It's 11 cents a day, and if you don't like it, it has a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to nordvpn.com slash disputedorigin or click the link in the description to take advantage of this offer. Thank you, Nord, for sponsoring this video. At number seven, ICBM, all missiles and equipment fire an additional two missiles. I don't know if I need to explain just how overpowered this DLC item can be. ATG and Plasma Shrimp are already some of the best items in the game, so an item that makes them three times stronger is gonna be pretty nuts. This item even opens the door for firework builds with a remote caffeinator, and if you have a firework build with a Plasma Shrimp, you've basically already won. This is by far one of the coolest items in the game. There's nothing quite like watching thousands upon thousands of shrimp coming out of your tiny little character model. That's somebody's fetish, I'm just saying. This item is also amazing on Engineer, assuming you're using harpoons, which you probably should be. I'm not your dad, but it's probably a good idea to ditch the bubble shield at this point. Outside of Engineer though, this item can be really inconsistent. The problem with ICBM is it doesn't really do anything on its own. It enhances the power of other items, but if you don't have any of those items, ICBM is effectively a paperweight in your inventory. In my experience, there's a 50-50 shot whether or not you'll find it in a run where you can actually utilize it, so for that reason I couldn't justify putting it any higher. At number 6, Symbiotic Scorpion. This item has a 100% chance to permanently reduce armor by 2 every hit. This item is very similar to Shattering Justice, except it's better in almost every way. Like Shattering Justice, it is a debuff, but instead of lasting for 8 seconds, it's permanent, and it doesn't cap at 60 armor. The more you attack, the more damage you will do. Again, survivors like Commando can shred with this thing, especially when combined with Bleed. It does contribute to Deathmark, and teammates slash drones can utilize it, very similar to Shattering Justice. Now, the 100% chance is a little deceiving since that number is multiplied by your proc coefficient, so Rex, whose primary has a proc coefficient of 0.5, has a 50% chance to apply a scorpion to an enemy, but outside of niche examples like that, it's generally pretty consistent. Again, not every survivor can use it super effectively, polyloots and shrimp can help a little bit with applying stacks, but they also have low proc coefficients, so it's not super amazing. If you are playing a survivor that has a lower attack speed, Crowdfunder can be a good option for applying a lot of stacks in a short amount of time, but yeah, this item is just better Shattering Justice. The only time I would say Shattering Justice is better is on mid-tier enemies, since Shattering Justice reduces armor by 60, it takes 30 hits for Scorpion to be equivalent. On small enemies, you never really proc Shattering Justice anyway, so for enemies that take between 5 and 30 hits to kill, Shattering Justice will be marginally better, but in every other scenario, Scorpion trumps it. A lot, lot, of, lot of numbers on that one. In the number 5 spot, it's Hard Light Afterburner. Add 2 charges of your utility skill, and reduce utility skill cooldown by 33%. Up until this point, we've mainly been focusing on damage items, but Afterburner is a utility that has earned its spot on this list. Items like this usually are a nightmare to rank because they do something different on every survivor. But unlike similar items, Lysa, Hill, and Backup Mag, I can't think of a single survivor where having two extra charges of your utility isn't amazing. The utility skill is usually reserved for a mobility skill, so more dashes on Merc, more mines on Gunner, more blinks on Huntress, and so on. There's a couple of exceptions to this. On Artificer, you get more Ice Wall, which isn't a mobility skill, but it is one of Artificer's best moves. With three Ice Walls, you can basically stunlock Mithrix forever. On Loader, you get more Punches, which is the best move on Loader, and on Captain, you can get extra Diablo Strikes. With Orbitals, it's not my favorite, but it's still good. This item is amazing at keeping you out of trouble, unlike my nephew, who gets in a lot of trouble. If only he had a Hard Light Afterburner, or a Father Figure. Coming in at number four, 57 Leaf Clover. All random effects are rolled an additional time for a favorable outcome. What is going on with you? What are you talking about? You, you sound insane. A few years ago, this item was widely considered to be the best in the game. But in 2024, I think there are three red items that are better than this. For the uninitiated, this item essentially increases the odds of every luck-based item in the game. For example, Sticky Bombs, Bleed, Crit, Ukes, ATGs, Polyloots, Needle Tick, and the Perforators. 
I left a few out, but those are the main ones. Clover makes these items almost twice as likely to proc. This gets insane when these items start chaining off each other in what we call a proc chain. If you want to learn more about this mechanic, I have a full video where I go more in depth. 50 Cent Leaf Clover is an amazing item and has by far the most potential of any item in the game, but it has a major drawback. The fact that it relies on other items to work means the value you get from this item will vary drastically from run to run. It has the same problem as ICBM. The longer I've played, the more runs I've gotten where I find a clover and nothing to use with it. For a looped run, this is top tier and you will get the items you need, but for a regular six stage run, there's a good chance you won't find the items you're looking for. A lot of proc items are pretty rare, so getting an omega powerful proc chain build is just unlikely. At number three, spare drone parts. Your drones fire faster, have less cooldowns, shoot missiles, and gain a bonus chain gun. I have talked about this item a lot on this channel, Spare Drone Parts is one of my favorite items in the game, and in my opinion, the best red introduced with the DLC. There's not really a lot to say about this item that hasn't already been said. It buffs the shit out of drones to an absurd degree. Drones scale with the enemy's level, not your own. This means drones will always be effective against enemies, and won't suffer from drop-off like most other items. Even in Armageddon difficulty with unfair scaling, Drone Parts still shreds. And don't even get me started on combining it with Empathy Cores. These two items are by far the best build in the game, and it's not even close. I'm going to cut it short here because I've talked about it a million times, but yeah, drone item good. At number two, Brilliant Behemoth. Your attacks explode in a 4 meter radius for a bonus 60% total damage to nearby enemies. About two years ago, I made a video where I ranked every red in the game. Since then, my opinions on many items have changed. In that original video, I put Behemoth at 7, but now I think it's a contender for best red in the game. There's not a single survivor Behemoth is bad on. This item essentially deals 60% more damage. It doesn't affect everything like debuffs and bans, but it affects almost everything else. And what I love about this item is just how it feels the instant you pick it up. It's really unscientific and hard to quantify, but you just feel powerful when you pick it up. Not to mention the hidden nuances of this item, Cap made a great video going over all of them, but some notable things you can do is explode grenade bounces, proc void crit on bosses, double proc expose, stack desperado, and some abilities even double proc. Behemoth is the most intricate red in the game, and while drone parts might be better on paper, I think Behemoth is just way more hype. It feels like a red item should. I have thousands of hours in this game, and Behemoth is one of the few items I still get excited to see. Probably my favorite item in the game, but I can't justify putting it at number one, and if you watch the red ranking video, you probably have a good idea about this next one. At the number one spot, Head Stompers. Increase jump height and create an explosion when holding the interact button in the air. You're also immune to fall damage. There was a time where this item was hated by the community and widely considered as one of the worst reds in the game. This led to Hopu buffing the shit out of an already amazing item. Let's start with the defensive side of things. First of all, this item gives you a higher jump, which might be annoying sometimes, I'm looking at you pot rolling, but overall, this is an amazing effect. Enemies aren't really programmed to deal with vertical mobility, so just by staying high up in the air, you're going to be avoiding a lot of hits. The only other item that gives vertical mobility is the Hopu Feather. A higher jump really trivializes Mithrix too, he really just can't hit you. You also don't take fall damage, which isn't a huge deal in Monsoon, but in Eclipse, fall damage is doubled and can kill. So this item just straight up removes one of the hardest modifiers. This item is also a pillar skip. It used to require a quail and some speed to skip, but with the new host skip method, all you need is a headset. But that's not all. This item is also one of the strongest damaging items in the game. Stomping from max height deals 10,000% of your base damage and has a maximum area of effect of 100 meters. That's pretty good. Head Stompers is in a league of its own and by far the best red in the game. But that's going to be it for today. Let me know if you agree with my ranking. As always, these lists are very flawed, so I kind of just go by feel. There's no way to objectively rank them. That said, I'm pretty happy with the way this one turned out. Thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers. I started YouTube about five years ago, and I'm really happy that I still get to do it. And an extra special thank you to my members for supporting the channel, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Ta-ta for now.